Hi, everyone. Welcome to my talk, MILFAS Redesign of Parallel Fussing Using Microservice Architecture. Fussing has shown its great success in bug detection. Why do we need parallel fussing? First, existing fuzzers mostly run serially, and modern CPU have multiple cores. To fully utilize the resource, we should run multiple instances. Second, we want to find more bugs in shorter time to meet the fast development cycle. For example, mainstream fuzzers like AFL or AFL++ supports parallel fuzzing to use all the CPU cores. And OSS fuzz by Google actually spend hundreds of thousands of CPU hours fuzzing a single project every day. And cluster fuzz light supports parallel fuzzing in continuous integration like GitHub Action. So here's the state of the art parallel fuzzing architecture. We run multiple instances of the base fuzzers in parallel, and each runs seriously and independently. To share the fuzzing progress with each other, each instance will synchronize the corpus periodically with each other. However, there are some limitations in the common approaches. The underlying reason is that the base fuzzers are not designed for parallel fuzzing. Base fuzzers run serially and synchronously. For example, AFL will pick a test case from the corpus, mutate it, execute it, and collect feedback, and loop. Each step happens in order. And also, instances rely on periodic synchronization to share the progress. This will bring us two challenges. One is that CPU cycles might be wasted at blocking I.O. So if some steps in the loop are blocked, the CPU hours might be wasted. For example, we found that the fussing to fussing uh, TCP dump might end up with about only 70% of CPU utilization due to the blocking I.O. The second challenge is that the synchronization might be either untimely or costly. If we have less frequent synchronization, the instances might fuss with obsolete fussing states and do duplicate work. If we have more frequent synchronization, they can be costly and introduce many broken I.O. because we rely on the file system. For example, this graph demonstrates the challenge two of the existing approach. We fuss with the tested program with 10 instances for one hour with FL++ with different synchronization frequency. We found that if the synchronous Synchronization frequency is too low or too high, the performance will drop dramatically. But even with the appropriate frequency, the performance is still much worse than that of running a single instance for 10 hours due to the previous limitation. So how can we avoid these problems? To avoid the CPU cycle waste and update the state timely but cheaply. Luckily, we found some potentials in microservice architecture. What is microservice architecture? It's an architectural pattern that arranges a publication as a collection of loosely coupled fine-grained services and communicate with lightweight protocols. It's concurrent because the service can run independently. It's parallel because each service can run multiple instances. It's efficient because they will perform State service state partition amount of services, which um, is also known as data sharding, to reduce the synchronization. These look great fit for parallel fuzzing. With that, we present MILFAS, a parallel fuzzing framework with microservice architecture. To avoid the CPU wasting by broken I.O., we break the fuzzing loop into four services. Each service will run concurrently and have multiple workers to achieve parallelism. To avoid the limitation of periodic synchronization, the fussing state are partitioned among the services and the workers so that the synchronization is reduced to the greatest extent. So now let's take a deeper look at how it works. First, we go from monolith to microservices. We break the fussing loop into four services, the corpus man management, test case generation, test case execution, and feedback collection. The service communicate with each other to form a fuzzing loop. 
and we partition the first state among the service. For example, the corpus management service now maintains the corpus and the feedback collection service maintains the co-coverage being met. These steps reduce the tight coupling of the first in loop and allows further improvement. Now let's take a look at how each service looks like. A simple service will have a worker that processes the input and generates some output for other services. So each service is both a producer and a consumer. From previous slides, we can see that this service still forms a loop. So if one service stops, go get stuck, the whole loop gets stuck. To support concurrency, we add an output caching queue to each service. The outputs are put into the queue, caching queue instead of sending directly to the consumer. So when the consumer service is ready, it can fetch the inputs from the caching queue. So now the producer consume, and consumer service can run concurrently. If any of the service gets stuck due to any reason, the other service can still make progress. Next, we support parallelism. Instead of having only one worker inside the service, we run multiple workers in parallel. To exploit parallelism, we add an input dispatcher for load balancing. It maintains a first-in-first-out queue of the idle workers. So if the service receives some inputs, it pops a worker out of the queue and sends inputs to it. To keep most workers busy in order to fully exploit parallelism, when a service receives large inputs, it will first partition it based on the number of idle workers and then dispatch them. In this way, we won't end up with one worker possessing a huge input and others are idle. Now we have concurrency and parallelism, but the first state now is shared by the workers. If all of them need to read and write to the state at the same time, we will have costly synchronization. To avoid that, we perform state partition. We have two levels of state partition. The first level is the service level, which we partition the whole fuzzing state among the services. We have already done that by breaking the fuzzing loop into services. For example, the corpus now becomes the state of the corpus management service. The second level is the worker level. We further partition the service state among the workers. For example, now each worker maintains a unique subset of the corpus in the corpus management service. Each partition is self-contained, which means the workers don't need synchronization with each other to finish its job. For example, if the corpus management um, in the corpus management service, suppose we have 10 workers, if the service wants to pick 10 test cases, for mutation, we can just ask each worker to pick one test case and then accumulate them. When we find an interesting, new interesting test case, we save them randomly to only one of the workers. With that, workers avoid do, doing duplicative work. And since there will be only one worker assessing each partition of the state, so the state update can be fast and we can make it continuously to update the state in time. In this way, Fuzzers can fuzz with up-to-date fuzzing state. For evaluation, we evaluate MuFuzz on MACMA for co-coverage and bug detection. We compare, with, we compare MuFuzz with three state-of-the-art parallel fuzzers, AFL++, AFL Team, AFL Edge, for 24 hours with 40 cores in parallel. Compare with state-of-the-art parallel fuzzers, MuFuzz finds on average 24% more co-coverage and 33% more bugs. We further evaluated the contribution of each component and found that state partition improves the performance by about 20% and concurrency improves less than 10% in this evaluation setting. Moreover, MuFast finds 11 new bugs in well fast projects like Lua, FFMPG, and PHP. So now let's discuss some limitations of MuFast. First, in the distributed setting, MuFuzz service communication will have higher data communication than state-of-the-art approaches. To avoid that, we can run a MuFuzz instance on each machine and synchronize the corpus management service only, which is the state-of-the-art approach. Second, 
State partition might not apply to all existing fuzzing algorithms, and redesigning some of the existing algorithms to apply state partition can be difficult. We can just try best effort, and the worst case is that we don't partition at all and fall back to periodic synchronization. So here's one open question for parallel fuzzing. Can parallel fuzzing achieve linear performance, which means fuzzing an instance for one hour will have the same performance of running one instance for n hours? This is something we like to explore more in the future. That's all, thank you. Um, our um, project has been released on GitHub. Interesting readers will find it with this link. Thank you very much. <laughs>